Okay, good afternoon. We've got Jody here today in Frank's absence. We'll start with the broadcast and Jeremy. Hi Jody. Hi. Um, what's wrong with Frank first of all? He's got a bit of a bug. He's, he's had it for about a, well, a week to ten days to be fair. And the older you get, it's harder to shake, isn't it? So, um, <laughs> no, after, he ain't feeling the best, but um, it'll be alright for, for the game on Sunday, so. And uh, it's the FA Cup after four games and 11 uh, days, a pretty tight schedule for you guys. Um, how big is rotation going to be on Sunday and uh, what's the injury news on your injured players? Any chance of any of those getting back on the pitch? Uh, injury wise, um, Alonso is looking like he's, he's, he's defo out. Uh, Ruben is the, the obvious one. Um, but apart from that, we're still um, kind of having a look at a few players to see what the fallout's like from the Brighton game. But at the moment, it's looking um, not too bad. So we should be able to select from the majority of the group other than your Alonso's and Ruben's. How about Tamori and Giroud? Yeah, Fick was, he trained today, but he's um, he still looks still not not feeling the best himself. He's He's got a bit of a, a bug as well, but no, Olivier's okay as well. So no chance of a bug sweeping through the through the cab, is there? Do you know what? There's been a bit of it flying about anyway, so um, I'm hoping it ain't going to get any worse than it was. Um, but yeah, I think it's just that time of the year, so you've got to put up with those sort of things. Is it a big chance for a big rotation after so many games? I think we'll look at maybe seeing how the lads are feeling. Um, obviously, with the amount of games that there is, you've got to look to utilise the squad and I'm sure there'll be a few changes from from the Brighton game, but how many, um, I'm not too sure yet. Where does the FA Cup uh, rank in your priorities? Obviously, your last 16 in the Champions League, top four Premier League aspirations. What about the FA Cup? But it's a prestigious competition. I think you, whatever competition you enter, you should look to try and go as far as you possibly can. Um, obviously there's a, a balancing act sometimes when you've got those amount of games that you're talking about but at the same time um, I think the manager will want to pick a team that can go out there against Forest and win the game. Transfer window is open, Jody. Chelsea fans wondering you know, what's going to happen. From your point of view, where does the squad need to be strengthened this month? Well, I think there's maybe a couple of areas that you'd be you'd be looking at um, without going into them. I think that it would all depend on the, what the movements are from within the club as well. Um, I'm not as privy to those conversations as the manager is, um, but I'm sure there's a little bit of work going on behind the scenes. But I think that any any movements or anybody that's being brought in or going out the door would have to be for the benefit of the club and uh, improve the squad. I don't think there's any point of bringing anybody in that isn't going to improve us. And um, I know that the manager and the, the powers that be are, are looking at those. You mentioned Giroud just there. I mean, he's 33, he's a World Cup winner. He's not been playing. Um, would it be kind of fair to let him perhaps look for football this month somewhere else? Well, I think, as I said, he's, he still plays with Chelsea and it's got to be a, a benefit of the club. We can't just let people walk out the door if that means that we're going to be left short somewhere. Um, yes, there is a... Uh, sometimes you've got to look at the, the individual as well and, and whether it's beneficial for them to be here as well if they're unhappy. But I've got to say, um, Giroud's been nothing but a, a class act and a top professional since he's been here, so I don't envisage there, envisage there being any, any problems along those lines. And how valuable do you see that Mishi is being still this month? I think everybody's valuable. I think at the moment, as I said, we've we've had to bat on without um, being able to bring in any player. So you need to view every single player amongst the group as a, a valuable asset. Um, you never know what could happen as far as injuries or form. Um, so everybody's important until they leave the, or walk out the door. Everybody's important. Jody, just finally, these FA Cup games have been delayed by a minute for a, a mental health awareness and a message. How important is that to you and Chelsea? Oh, I think it's super important. I think the more um, knowledge that is being handed about and awareness of people being able to openly speak about it, um, the fact that the, the kickoff's being put back by a minute is obviously going to be talked about and, and that's a good thing. Um, I think there's a video going out with the, the gaffer and Callum involved in it as well, so the more people speak about um, these types of issues, the better. Jerry. Jody, it's another home game, three three defeats recently. Have you discussed, have you worked out what's going on at home? Um, we've certainly discussed it um, and it was kind of mentioned a little bit um, after the Arsenal game, um, explaining that obviously we've got a big game coming up going into Brighton, but um, realising that we do have to address our home form 
Um, I don't think it's uh, just a physical or a technical thing. I, obviously, the, the the mental side of the game is sometimes when you're not maybe performing at your best or you have a, a little run of games where there's maybe uh, the performance levels haven't been quite what they should be. I mean, you need to start looking at it and it will certainly be addressed before um, the game on Sunday, um, whether it be by video or by trying to have a bit of an open chat we do have to try and get on top of our home form and it's it's something that the manager's been looking at. Do you think the crowd puts a bit of pressure on the team if you're not getting ahead early in the game? Uh, I think there's there's pressure for most teams when um, if you're at a big club and you're at home I think you're expected to be performing better than maybe we are. Um, is there an element that we, we can all do a little bit better? I think there is. Uh, I think the players need to give the fans something to shout about. Um, and that has, hasn't happened as much as it should. But then there are also the other side of it from where you go, OK, the players might need a little bit of help here. Um, clearly, there's been some moments in games where um, everybody's been frustrated. But that's that's not just the fans. That's the players on the pitch, the subs, the staff. Um, and I think the more we can all pull in the same direction and support each other, the hopefully the quicker we'll get out of the little slow dip in form. And you got an FA Cup winner's medal, 2000 I think, wasn't it? Um, yeah, long time ago. <laughs> Does the FA Cup still mean as much? Do you, can you explain to the players what it meant to you that day? I think that over the course of time, the, the emphasis that goes on some of the other competitions is maybe naturally going to dilute the... Um, the prestige of the FA Cup if you don't really know too much about it but certainly within within our dressing room I think there's enough people that value the FA Cup and so they should it's I think it's a, a competition that's um, well known around the world um, for many a year so um, it certainly won't be um, the emphasis won't be diluted within our dressing room and like you said I think whenever you enter the pitch wearing a, a Chelsea shirt you go and look to win any game or any competition that you're performing in just finally, any oh, abiding memory from that day that sticks in your mind? Yeah, I should have come off the bench a bit quicker because I, I think I only played for a couple of minutes when I'd done all right in the competition up to the final, so I felt I should have played a bit more. Okay, Liam and then Karen. Jamie, given your, um, okay, yeah. given your past in Chelsea's academy, how much personal <coughs> pride have you taken in the, the strides that Tammy Abraham, Mason Mount, Dakota Tamori, and, and some of the others have made in the first team this year? Yeah, I, I think there's and a whole host of, of us that have taken a little bit of personal pride and obviously you have your own individual relationships with players um, but having known them for six, seven years to see how well they're doing is, is great but you do get to the point where I think that initial moment I remember thinking after the Norwich game when in the first few games of the season, a lot of the goal scorers and the people that were performing really well were the academy boys. That was that was great, and there was a lovely initial initial feeling about it. But now you're kind of beyond that, and I think that they they fully deserve to be in and around the squad. They they deserve to be playing, and they've performed at levels that have justified that. Um, there is a massive a bit of pride and um, looking amongst. Um, some of the people that I've worked with them over the academy that we still obviously we're really close with here um, it is something that we especially over the, the end of the year you do have a, a couple of drinks and a chat with people that you work with over the academy and you, it's been a, a fantastic decade but it doesn't stop there you know looking at when the next one's coming through and, and also the, the ones that are in and around the squad now they need to keep performing because I think the easier the easiest time to maybe do bits in the first team is when people don't really give you as much respect as what they've maybe now earned so now the tough part comes of when you're performing and people expect big things of you then you've got to do it week in week out and looking beyond the academy boys that are getting a lot of minutes you've got the likes of Billy Gilmore Ian Matson, Mark Gurhey how hard are they pushing in training and are these the kind of games where they can get valuable experience as well yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're doing really well, um, especially Billy and Mark. Um, they've been in and around the squad a, a lot and whenever they've trained with us, they've they've trained at a particularly high level. Um, Billy was off ill today. As I said, that bug's still kicking around, didn't it? He was off ill today, so he didn't train with us, which he might have done if he was a, he was around. But no, though, that, that's what you want. You want players that are maybe not in and around the, the squad a lot but when they are called upon to either train or um, to be involved in squads that they're ready to go and those two particularly are, are ones that have been 
performing at a level but not only that the mentality side of the game are ready to go whenever called upon whether it's a, a last minute call that people like Lamptey got at, at Arsenal um, but that's that's how they breed him in the academy they've got to make sure that they're ready and prepared whenever the call comes because you never know when it can happen OK, I'm finished with Kerry Tony, there's clearly you talked about protecting that pathway players have got to come in and that comes to the window if they're good this is something we've seen at the Southampton Academy come through the club what does it mean to you now that finally this is the way that Chelsea is working that you can frankly draw on the experience from you to bring Lamptey into a big game like that to get wins over Arsenal and Tottenham and see the academy really having an impact on this club? Yeah, I, I think knowledge amongst players is important at any level and if you have experience with players that are in and around you Certainly Lamptey had performed for me really well, performed for Joe really well. And so whenever you can call in a little bit of knowledge amongst those players, the better. Um, and if you value the opinion of the people that you're ask, asking, all the more all the more reason to be doing it more. Um, it doesn't quite happen like that all the time. Um, certainly there's players that um, would come over from the academy now that I don't necessarily know as well as I, I would know these lads. Um, but at the same time, when you've got a relationship with the other building over there, um, you're certainly in the in the know and um, kept in the loop of the ones that are doing well. So uh, I think that can only help. It's I think it's something that should should be happening at most clubs. I get that it's, it it doesn't always work that way, and I, I get that some managers have different um, visions for for how things should work. But um, luckily for us, we have a great academy. We have. Uh, some great young players and we have a manager that wants to wants to involve them or at least give them an opportunity to perform in front of him and if they do all right then he's as he's proved this year the manager's given him a chance you can focus in the spotlight over social media after jose Mourinho's comments that maybe he was worried about your club not being able to perform in the big matches how satisfying personally was that win against tottenham and arsenal it's always be, it's always nice beating Spurs and Arsenal anyway, isn't it? Um, I think a lot of people read misread my laughing at Jose's comments. I know you're panicking here. That, that what I'm going to say. Um, listen, I've got nothing but the utmost respect for Jose. I think he's an absolute legend and one of the best managers in the game. I was just laughing at the fact that I felt that he was worried about whether we was going to be winning games or not. I, I personally was laughing thinking I don't think he's that bothered whether we're winning that much um, and so he shouldn't he's, he was as a pundit so but at the same time listen whenever you go up against someone like Jose Mourinho or Spurs or Arsenal it's, in a, it's always a tough game and as I said Jose's a, a top top manager and he's been in there and already getting great results so but to come out on top against Spurs and Arsenal is is good but like the manager reminded the the group straight away, you've got to then go out and carry on this form and continue the momentum. And unfortunately, we haven't we haven't done that of late. We've been a little bit up and down in our form, and that's the most important thing about the games that are coming up. Is that it's not just beating Arsenal and Spurs. Yes, that's great. The fans have had an unbelievable day out to go and do it away was special, and the the types of performances that they were. But the manager was quick to remind them that we, we need to make sure that we need to get more points on the board and keep the consistency levels up because where we want to be, we're going to have to be consistent. OK, cameras off, please.